Hello my friend, happy to see you here. Today we have a really interesting equation b squared minus b cubed equal to 36. We need to solve this equation for b. So if you have your solution, your assumption, you can also write it in the comments below and then we will check your answer. So it will be really interesting. So first of all, let's write this 36 on the left side. So this is our first step and I'm going to show you my approach, how I solve this type of question. So we have b squared minus b cubed minus 36 and equal to equal to zero. Right now, instead of the 36, of course, there are a lot of ways how can we express the 36, for example, 20 plus 16, 27 plus 9, and the best way, of course, this is 27 plus 9. A lot of students might be asking why 27 plus 9 is the best way. Just look at it, just wait a few seconds. So we have the same beginning, b squared minus b cubed minus, instead of 36, we write 27 plus 27 plus 9, 27 plus 9 equal to zero. And right now, let's open parentheses, let's write it without parentheses, but we need to change <clears throat> this sign to the opposite one. So we have b squared minus b cubed minus 27 and minus 9 equal to equal to zero. Right now, why do we choose 27 and 9? Because 27, this is a great constant, we can write this 27 as 3 cubed. And 9, why, why 3 cubed? Because 3 times 3 times 3. We can easily do this. Why uh, 9 is a great constant? Because we can write this, this 9 as 3 squares. We can write this as 3 times 3. So this is extremely great expressions for us. And right now, let's write instead of this 27, let's write 3 cubed. And instead of 9, let's write 3 square. <clears throat> so what do we have as a result? b square minus b cube minus 3 cube and minus 3 square equal to equal to zero. Really great. And right now, why do we why, why do we choose these expressions 27 and 9? Because right now we can group our squares. We have b square and 3 square. We can group it. And we have b cube and 3 cube. <clears throat> we can easily group it. And right now let's let's do let's do this. First of all, b square minus 3 square. So in the beginning we have first expression b square minus 3 square. The next thing we have minus b cube plus 3 cube, okay, b cube plus 3 cube plus 3, 3 cube equal to, equal to 0. So really great. And right now, let's. I really hope you understand my solution until this moment. This is not a hard thing, but I hope you pause the video and you will understand why do we have these two groups. Because right now, first group, difference of squares, b squared minus 3 squared. Second group, these are a sum of two cubes, b cube plus 3 cube. So that's why, let's remember, because it sounds familiar, a lot of students should know these formulas. First of all, difference of squares from here, so a squared minus b squared equal to a minus b, a minus b, times a plus b, a plus b. Really great. And second group, sum of two cubes. Different formula, because maybe this one is all known formula right now, a cube plus b cube, uh, equal to a plus b, this is our formula, a plus b, and can we can continue with a square minus a b and plus b b square. Really great. And right now, right here, difference of squares, right here, a thumb of two cubes. So we know everything. And right now, let's apply this formula. Maybe we can factor something. I don't know, but let's do it. First of all, let's start with difference of squares. So b minus 3, b plus 3, b minus 3, uh, b plus 3. We have minus b cube plus 3 cube. We have sum of two cubes. So we have this formula. So we have b plus 3, b plus 3, and right now we have b square <coughs> minus 3b and plus and plus 9 equal to equal to 0. Really great. So we apply these two formulas and it is extremely helpful for us because right now we have b plus 3 and we have b plus 3. So we can factor this b plus 3 as a common expression. So let's do it right now. We have b plus 3, b plus 3, and in another parenthesis what do we have? From here b minus 3 from this part. <clears throat> so we have b minus 3 minus this expression, this parenthesis, mm, b square minus 3b <clears throat> and plus 9, plus 9 equal to, equal to 0. Really great. Right here, b plus 3, so we can't simplify this more. We have a very basic e expression. Right here, we can simplify this parenthesis. We can actually get rid of this parenthesis and of this one as well, because we have a negative sign. We can actually get rid of it, but we need to change all the signs to the opposite one. Yeah. So we have b plus 3, so the same beginning, b plus 3. And we're going to continue with without parenthesis right here, b minus 3, 
minus b square plus 3b and minus 9 equal to equal to 0 really great and right now let's let's group all of this uh, together because we have b plus 3 and right now let's group all these things together so we need to order all of this stuff we have minus b square so let's start with this b minus b square uh, minus b square in the beginning because this looks like a quadratic equation we have square we have b we have constant so let's group it first of all minus b square secondly b plus 3b so plus 4b and minus 3 minus 9 we have minus minus 12 equal to equal to 0 so i hope you understand it right now of course this is up to you i prefer multiplying this expression by minus one because then we can choose all the signs to the opposite one then we have like a great a really cute uh, quadratic equation we have b square minus 4b plus 12 but this is up to you okay leave it like that i hope you understand what i mean right now let's look at this question from a different uh, angle right now we have a product of two parentheses so a product of two parentheses equal to zero when the first parenthesis is equal to zero so b plus three equal to zero or the second parenthesis is equal to zero minus b square plus 4b and minus 12 is equal to <coughs> is equal to zero and right now we can multiply it by minus one because we will have a really great expression b square minus 4b and plus 12 and right now we have really great expression so as i said it before you can do this right here at this place but when you solve this uh, equation so you just need to split it by two parts so we have two equations the first one and the the second second equation first branch and the second branch so from here we can is instantly find our we can just solve it for b real quick so b first equal to minus three so this is our uh, this is our first real number root yeah we can solve it real quick right now second quadratic equation we can solve it also mm, really quick because uh, there is a basic quadratic equation we can solve it with the basic method of coefficients so a equal to 1 b equal to minus 4 and c equal to equal to 12 so we can easily plug in mm, it uh, right here so d equal to b square minus 4ac this is our uh, discriminant let's plug in uh, all of this uh, stuff into this spot so we have minus 4 square minus 4 times a times 1 and times c times 12 equal to right now minus 4 square 16 minus 4 times 12 we have 48 so our discriminant is equal to minus 32 a lot of students might be confused because of this but mm, there's nothing wrong it just it just depends how many roots you can get from here if discriminant is negative it means that from this branch you can get two uh, two complex uh, two complex roots because our discriminant is less than zero but doesn't matter let's find uh, this uh, complex root because we have a cubic equation so it means that we have three roots in total so let's find our let's solve it for <coughs> for uh, this negative discriminant so b second and third so right here we have two uh, two complex roots we have minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over all over to a let's plug in each of these elements we know everything we know discriminant we know with this coefficients so we have minus b minus uh, minus four plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus 32 and all over two times two times one right now minus minus 4 we have plus real quick so 4 plus minus square root of minus 32 we can't this is not a table case uh, we have negative sign so it means that we have to express this as a product so we have minus 1 times 16 times 2 or 8 times 4 this is up to you i prefer a faster method 16 times so this is our minus 32 we just express this in a different uh, in a different way right now we can split it square root of minus 1 times square root of 16 and times square root of 2 there's like a property square root property so don't be scared about it so 4 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 16 and times square root of 2 all over all over 2 really great square root of minus 1 equal to i square root of 16 equal to 4 and right here square root of 2 we just leave it like that so the thing beginning 4 plus minus 4i square root of 2 all over 2 and right now the final moment because we can easily split this um, question by real part and imaginary part so that's why we can write it as 
4 over 2, so we can divide our numerator by parts. So this part by 2 and this part by 2, which is like a common denominator. And 2 is our denominator. So 4 plus minus 4i square root of 2 over over 2. And right now we can simplify this because 4 over 2 equal to 2. Right here we can cancel it. So we have uh, 2 plus minus 2i square root of 2 plus minus 2i square root of 2. So we have 2 complex roots. And let's gather all the roots uh, together and let's write our final final answer uh, to this question. So our answer, our answer, let's solve it. Let's write it as a block right here. So we have, mm, we have uh, first one, b first equal to minus 3. So b first equal to minus 3 and b second and third equal to 2 plus minus 2i square root of 2. Okay, really great. This one is a uh, real number root and these two roots are our complex roots. Right now, uh, let's check real quick our b first equal to minus 3. Let's do it right here. For example, let's write it as as a proof to this question. Maybe we, we solved it wrong. I don't know exactly, but let's do it. So b square minus b cube. Uh, equal to 36, equal to 36. So from here, what what can we have? Minus 3 square, so we're going to plug in instead of uh, instead of b, we plug in this minus 3. So we have minus 3 square minus minus 3 cube equal to 36. A lot of a lot of negative signs, a lot of power, but let, let's do this step by step. Minus 3 square equal to 9, minus minus 3 cube equal to minus 27. So it means that these two minuses is plus. So as a result, we have 9 plus 27 equal to 36, which is absolutely correct because 36 equal to 36. So our root is absolutely is absolutely correct. And this is our solution to this question. And uh, I want to add to this that this is a full solution to this question because, you know, sometimes a lot of students, um, they uh, solve this question with one root, b first equal to minus 3, and they solve this question by inspection. So they they just choose the b, they just uh, change these values. They say, okay, b equal to 1, not good, b equal to 2, this is not a great expression, and b equal to minus 3 is a great expression, and they solve it. But uh, just remember a very important moment, because if you solve this question by inspection, then you forget about the second branch, because uh, factoring helps us to like not to forget about roots. If you factor this question step by step, uh, right here you can uh, solve this question with, with the three roots. Not only with the one root by inspection, but you can also say that I have two complex roots, which is also really great uh, for you and uh, for your teacher, that you solve this question completely, because what does fundamental theorem of algebra tell us? It tells us how many roots we can get from, from, from uh, different equations. For example, right here we have cubic equation, so it means 3 is the highest power, so we have three roots in total. What about right here? Quadratic equation, discriminant, 2 is the highest power, so it means two roots in total. Where do we have it? We have it right here. Uh, and a linear function, b to the power 1 and 1 root. I hope you understand my thoughts about it. It helps us to find, um, to get, uh, to find out how many roots we can get from, from a different equation. Of course, it depends on the equation. Sometimes you can get one real, two complex, two, co two real, one complex, different combination. But in general, it helps us to, uh, to simplify a little bit our uh, thoughts, uh, thoughts in, the, in our head, because maybe you sit in your exam and you might be like, okay, quadratic equation, two roots, I have only one root, maybe something with something went wrong or exam for example right here linear function we have only one root and you say okay there yeah, this is a great i saw this question correctly so a few thoughts about it maybe a, a lot of students here so i want you to to hear me and to understand what i mean right now so every time you have an equation just scan how many roots you can get from here and don't be scared about equa uh, different equations if you still have any problem with this one you can actually pause the video and i really hope you, you will understand it because to be honest this is not a hard question Mm, this is a basic question with, with a few tricks, okay? This is a tricky moment. This is not a classic. This is not a book moment. Uh, this is like a quick thing which is called like intuition. You say uh, square and cube. Okay, I can I can write it as square and cube and then I can group, okay? With this trick, it, this is really helpful trick because uh, if you have, for example, 35, it, this, tricks is, this trick is not good. You can't uh, write as 27 plus 9, but 27 plus 8, you, can, you have a cube right here but you you don't know what what can we do with this eight yeah i hope you understand my thoughts about
about it. So this is my solution to this question. I really hope you understand it. Also write your thoughts, write your response in the comments below. We have a really great community here. So I really hope you, you enjoy it. A lot of teachers, a lot of students here. So I think I really hope this video is helpful in any way. And I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your support. And I really appreciate that you watch, uh, watch my uh, channel and watch my videos. It's extremely grateful. And I want to say thank you for, for everything, for, for being here and to cr for creating such a great and uh, such a great community. So thank you everyone for your time. This is my solution to this question. Write your thoughts, write your response in the comments below and see you in the next videos. Have a great day and take care of yourself.